Hello everyone, welcome to HP Extreme, the new generation of hot process soap making. This is Sharon with Rose of Sharon Essential Skin Care. And I'm so blessed to have you join me today for the making of Floap Soap, F-L-O-A-H-P Soap, which is my version of floating soap or what some soap makers would refer to as whipped soap. This soap was created using the SJHP SBHP 10 minute hot process method. Fluid hot process soap on the countertop in less than 10 minutes. You can learn more about this method by joining our group on Facebook called Hot Process Soap Making with Sharon Johnson. And you can learn how to do this method yourself by purchasing the ebook tutorial, which is now available. So head on over and get your copy today. Now let's talk for a moment about floating soap. It has been said that the invention of the floating soap was a quote unquote happy accident that occurred as a result of an unnamed employee accidentally leaving the mixing machine on too long which whipped air into the soap mixture. So the very first floating soap, known as ivory soap, was created and sold in 1879 by a well-known company called Procter & Gamble. And its main selling points was that the soap was 99.44% pure and that it floats, making it superior to all other soaps because you didn't have to reach around in the bathtub to find it. So those two traits have made ivory soap one of the most popular brands of soap in history. Now as a soap maker, there are a few ways you can create floating soap or whipped soap. The two methods for hot process soap making would be the rebatching method and also the crock pot method. However, for both of these methods, it can become a bit tricky because if adding too much water, it will require a longer drying out period. Also, it may result in a soft, spongy bar of soap. Now, the most popular way of creating floating soap or whipped soap has been the cold process method. And with this method, you absolutely must use 50 to 85% hard oils, and you must also soap using cold oils, butters, and lye water solution. Now, unfortunately, with the cold process method, you are limited to pastel colors due to the excessive whipping, which creates a very white soap base. And in cold process soap making, due to the excessive whipping needed to create a thicker soap, it's often difficult to create swirls, and there's also a very high probability of your having holes and or air bubbles in your soap. So whenever using either of those three methods to create a floating soap, I personally would say, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Now the new way to create floating soap is by using the SJHP SBHP 10 minute hot process method. So if you're ready to create floating soap with darker, rich, vibrant colors, little to no holes or air bubbles, simply use the recipes in the ebook for guaranteed results. Okay, okay, enough of Soap Making Chemistry 101. Are you guys ready to make some float soap? Well, let's get started. A very inexpensive hand mixer is all that's needed when creating my version of floating soap. So I've already cooked my soap using the SJHP method, which creates fluid hot process soap. It's now time to add my mica colorants, which are always pre-mixed and stored in Wilton bottles. And I use one teaspoon of mica colorant to one tablespoon of distilled water. So my pre-mixed colorants are always ready to go and no more fumbling around in the kitchen at the last moment.
So now it's time to add my fragrance oils. So hand mixer on standby and ready to go. After adding the fragrance oil, now it's time to check the temperature of my soap. The temperature of the soap is around 150 degrees, so now is the perfect time to start whipping air into the soap using a hand mixer. No expensive stand mixer is needed when creating my version of Flope Soap. Be careful not to over whip your soap because you don't want the soap to cool down too quickly. So once again, I'm checking the temperature of my soap. Now I've already lined three sides of the mold with a fondant mat and I'll also be using a gear tie as a hanger swirl tool to create swirls within the soap. Now even after whipping the soap, the soap was so very fluid I was a bit concerned if this was going to even turn out, so you'll see me using my hand mixer once again to lightly whip the soap just to be on the safe side.
So now I spritz the top with alcohol just to moisten it a little bit so I can give it a quick swirl and this will actually be the bottom of the soap so I'm not too concerned as to how the swirls are going to look. So that's it. Now it's time to go into the freezer. Stay tuned for the cut. Now as promised, a lovely, beautiful, vibrant bar of soap. Now the true testing of this method is with the use of a fondant mat. And I did so on purpose just so you could see how well the soap would turn out even when whipping fluid hot process soap. Now for all of your soap making needs, such as mica colorants, soap molds, and even this fabulous soap cutter, you guys need to go and check out Workshop Heritage. I will leave a link to her shop in the description box below. So there you have it guys, the making and cutting of Flope Soap, F-L-O-A-H-P Soap, which again is my version of Floating Soap. Now you didn't think I'd let you leave without seeing the float soap in action, did you? Fingers crossed. Yes, it floats. Woohoo! Doing the happy dance, doing the happy dance. All right, I promise not to quit my day job. Now let's see how much lather this soap creates. Now I must admit, I was a bit hesitant in squeezing the soap too tightly. But wait until you see what happens when I actually start to use just a little bit more elbow grease. Wow, look at that lather and the bubbles. That is a lovely bar of soap. So maybe there is something to this floating soap after all. Maybe ivory soap makers did get it right. I hope you guys enjoyed the making of this float soap video. And maybe you too can go out and make your version of a floating soap. After all, look at that creamy and bubbly lather that is out of this world. Now stay tuned for photos of the cut. Okay guys, you know how we do it around here, and I can't let you leave without speaking a blessing over your life. So may God continue to bless you, keep you, and shine his face upon you. And remember, no matter what happened yesterday, today, or even tomorrow, God's mercies are new every morning. And for those of you who don't understand what I say by God's mercies are new every morning, this is what I mean. No matter how much you've messed up, made mistakes, have regrets, have disappointments in your life, done things that you wish you could change, that doesn't matter to God because God's mercies are new for you. He forgives you so you should learn to forgive yourself.
For the Lord blots out our sins and casts them into the sea of forgetfulness. So stop remembering what God has already forgotten. So if you haven't already asked Jesus Christ into your heart, I encourage you to say this prayer with me. Dear God, I know I am a sinner. I believe Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I now accept your forgiveness and offer of eternal life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. From this day forward, I will choose to follow you. Amen. So if you said that prayer with me today, here is what the Word of God says about you, that you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So get excited because you have a new life ahead of you. Yes, you have hope and your future is bright. So go ahead and follow your dreams. There is nothing stopping you now. No need to look back at the past, but look ahead to the future. And remember, if God can be for you, then who can be against you? Amen. God bless you, and I can't wait to see you the next time.